the name of it is just more the how it what it's pointing to, which is negating two. Yeah. So if it is a one, it's not emphasized. What's emphasized is negating two. Yeah, which is duality, let's say. And so like where we're sitting, I'm going to start, Mike. It's already. Yeah. Where we're sitting. But most of the time, it's really not the problem. Oh, I'm going to mute all. Can you hold, Paul, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm muting all right now. And unmute yourself. So the assumption is one, let's say. Yeah. So that's the given. Or in a uh, great master's uh, term, being ourselves reality. That's the given. That's the assumption of non-duality is that you are what you're looking for. Yeah, that's it. So then its direction is negation. Yeah, so it's not two. So there's no emphasis on what it is. There's an emphasis on what it's not. Yeah, why is that? Because what it's not seems to be more influential than what it is. Yeah. People are taking this place to be real and everything else is going on. So that can't be just underemphasized. It needs to be addressed. And it's being addressed not as the duality, but from, let's say, that unity, you know, or oneness. I don't like the term oneness, but let's say awareness. So you're now going to hear a message as awareness about what awareness is not or about what we're not yes instead of trying to hear the message of what we are as what we're not we're going to question the what we are not from what we are yeah simple direction change so you don't run into non-shamanism do you you don't run into non ceremony you don't run into non-buddhism you don't run into non jewish Theism or non-Christianity. Yes, you don't. It's Christianity, shamanism, Buddhism. Yes, that's the topic. Why is this different? Because of that, just that. It's emphasizing something that's going on and it's negating it. It says not non-duality because we feel everything that's going on is, is really going on and it's all going on to me. Yeah. And all this stuff is just the assumption that is the basis of our experiential event here. Yeah. And it's off in a sense, or that's the, that's the hypothesis of non-duality is that duality isn't true. Duality is an interpretation of appearances. Yeah. You're believing things can be get close to, and you can be far from, right? You can have, you can lose day and night contraction expansion in this case the action figure this object if you follow this master ramana mohashi he says it very clearly uh there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing which would be the body yes so a body without existence coming through it would be seen as a non-existent thing yes if you have uh, if you have had the experience i had it when i was young one of my uncles died and my mother brought me to the you know the wake and she looked at me and said you want to say goodbye to uncle fred i didn't really want to say goodbye to him but she brought me to the casket i looked in and i saw the body and i realized that was an uncle fred yeah now the body was completely the body i had been seeing for years then I was calling Uncle Fred. But when it, there was an absence of existence, it was obvious the body wasn't Uncle Fred, yeah? So the existence is like the I am, that sense of onness, yes? And that's what we seem, that's what we are, is that onness. Now, what the head is, the head is playing an incredible dualistic move. It's going through subject and object. So sometimes, you're the object that's being thought about and that object's pictured as a body, yes? When you think about you, you picture you as a body. That which is thinking about you pictures you as a body, yeah? And then sometimes you are the thing that's being thought about, which means you're an object. And then sometimes you're the thinking of it, which is the subject, 
This is what non-duality negates. It's just negating that you are a subject object object hybrid, so to speak, yeah? So this is not about changing so much of what we're not. It's about having an acceptance of what we're not by seeing it from what we are. That's basically that, yeah? And so what's driving a lot of seeking and everything else is the, is the, is the desperations and the discomfort of the action figure or, or of what we're not, and it has value. But when what you're not is hoping to get relief as what you're not through the mechanism of what you are, that doesn't work. Yes, you can't get into what you're not out of. You cannot become what you already are. So he explains it very beautifully, Ramana. And he says it in a lot of different ways. A lot of people wrote about his teachings. And one of the ways that stuck with me was there's a presupposing. So right away, it's, it's, it's implying that this is an action in time, yes? Because pre is before something. For something to be before something, it's usually this time involved, yes? So presupposing. So it's like Amelia and I, sometimes we assume that a store is open. We don't call to find out. And when we get there, it's closed, yeah? And we get sort of bummed out. And you would think that we would learn, but no, we just, we feel so assured that it's open that we don't call. And then we have to realize it's closed when we get there. It didn't suddenly close because we were coming. It had been closed the whole day. Yes. We just didn't look up a call. So we were based in an action on an assumption that was erroneous. Yeah. So there's this presupposing and pre is the, uh, Pre has a lot of flavor. It means a lot in this movement. Yes. Because duality is of time. Yeah. Time and duality go very hand in hand. Yeah. So the presupposing of a non-existent thing, this body. Yeah. What is being presupposed about the non-existent thing? That it's the existing thing. That this is the body that's conscious. This is the body that's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, when the body basically is just the camera that facilitates seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, yes? So again, we're starting on at the beginning of the race and the race is rigged already, yeah? So we need, this is the relief from the race is to see, see it before the race. Because when you're trying to see it while you're moving in the race, there's a blindness around that. If you can see it before the race and you cannot not see it because all seeing is before the race. The looking is after the race, but seeing is before the race. Awareness is before everything. Everything is appearing in awareness and nothing's appearing before awareness, yes? There's nothing that's aware of awareness. There's just awareness, yeah? Flooding around, doing whatever, yeah? And things are appearing in it. And the reaction to those things appearing in it is what we're living by, an interpretation, yeah? So you didn't have it when you were a kid and now you seem to be saddled with it. So we don't see usually life is happening. We see as life's happening to me, basically. That's the emphasis. So. There's a presupposing of this non-existent thing being that which is existing. That's the fundamental mistake that non-duality is there to negate. Yes, that's all it's saying. Yeah, it's saying you're not of a thing. You may seem to think you're in a thing, but you're not of thingness. Yeah? You can't know what you are of, but you can know what you're not of. And that's the direction of the message. This message is a not about trying to understand the incomprehensible is trying to describe the indescribable. We give all that up. We want to describe what's easily described, the activity going on in one's head. You can see it because you're not of it. Yeah, You're aware. Yeah? So that awareness is now not being directed out. It's just looking what's going on. Yeah, And you see, one second, you're an object, cast as an object. You're being thought about or you're worried about what people are thinking of you as an object. And then the next second, you're a subject. You're the one, I'm the one who's thinking all this and shit. Yes, that's subject object. That's duality. Yes. Non, not duality. That's the message. Not that. Wait a minute. Is, does that mean it's going to stop? No. 
it's going to continue because you were never doing it to begin with. It's mechanical. The action figure is built to see things that way, yes? When you, as an action figure, try to make a vow that I'm never going to judge another person again, you're going to judge in five seconds, yeah? You're not. That's the good news. The system is going to judge. That's how, it that's how it travels here, through judgment. It's always judging. The thing is, the, the idea that you're going to give up being the judger is ridiculous, yeah? We just had it yesterday. We, uh, well, I don't want to go into it, but it's... <laughs> There are so many obvious, in, if you hear this message, if you hear it, if you hear it, yeah, not become the hearer of the message. That's not hearing it. Hearing it is seeing the mental states going to arise and present you as the hearer of it. Once you take yourself as the hearer, there's no more hearing. You haven't heard the message. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't get it. Hallelujah. Can you imagine if you could get this? We say it about alcoholics, you know, if you drop an alcoholic into heaven, it'd be hell in a day. Yeah. Yeah. If if you could actually arrive at the one, you'd fuck it all up. As a two, <laughs> no freaking way. It would ruin it. It's like you hear about a great party, but it sucks every time you get there. You got to put two and two together. Why does the party suck? It doesn't. It sucks when you get there. <laughs> How can I figure out to get to the party without me being there? Good luck. Yeah. I want to be there to experience my own absence. Good luck. Yeah. So non-duality is a direction called negation, not denial. That's what the mental state does. When, de when the mental state is confronted with something that seems so fucking real, it denies it. Yeah. Like an alcoholic, an addict. Most of us as addicts and alcoholics were in a very long lasting state of denial because if we took honest stock of what was happening, we may have, have done something. So there's a lot of denial going on. Negation is just negating what's been appearing to be real and bringing it back to its true condition, which is an appearance. Yeah, not given a reality, but the reality of being an appearance, not an appearance that's real, but the reality of being, yes, an appearance. Things change. So simple message. The movement of the head, this is what you start learning about. Like if you're in recovery and stuff, if you're in recovery, we have a statement, uh, self-knowledge avails us nothing, which sounds like crazy because a lot of people have a lot, a lot of value in knowledge, yeah? But it's not the knowledge, it's the self, the sense of claiming to be the one who has the knowledge will avail you nothing. Yeah. But if you look, turn it into knowledge of self, it's incredibly valuable. Yeah. Self-knowledge avails you nothing. Knowledge of self is incredibly valuable. It's just a change in emphasis, isn't it? In this case, the knowledge is the emphasis and the topic is self. The other way the subject is self, and it's the it's information that the self has claimed. That's why it doesn't work, yes? But if you switch it around and you hear a message that brings about a knowledge about or concerning this idea of self, it's going to be incredibly valuable because it may lead you back to where you've never left, which is I'm not self. Yeah. Instead of trying to become not self or whatever, you see it on a dog shit level. Yeah, it's just a fact. And therefore, you start traveling later as that which you're not, which is that's the only value awareness has. There's no value in awareness itself. It's where awareness cannot seem to be aware. There's value in it. Yeah. So now you become awake to the fact that you're already awake. Yeah. And then you realize the head will jump into the idea that it believes you're asleep. Yeah while you're awake. So the fact is you're awake no matter what. And in the dreaming here, you can seem to be awake to that or you can seem to be asleep to that. It doesn't change the fact that you're awake. I think it's fine. Eh? Can you see yourself? No, no, whatever. Yeah, so 
If awakeness is a fact, this is the assumption of non-duality, being ourselves reality. It did not say becoming ourselves reality, being right now, present tense condition, knowing it or not, we are reality, let's say. So therefore we're awake. Then the experience can be like, I'm asleep to that. And, or there can be an experience that I'm awake to that. It doesn't change the fact. You're awake. No matter what your head says, you're awake. Yeah. No matter what your said head, your head says, you're awake. This is becomes like a knowledge, just like we had the we had the talks where, let's say you have a job, yeah, but you have a place to sleep, right? You have a house, and when you go to the job, do you have to chant that you have a house? Are you gonna forget that you have a house while you're at work? And if they keep you later, more time away from the house is going to convince you you don't have a house? Obviously not, right? If you worked in Europe, would it convince you that space, that going that far, that could probably work, that you'll forget you have a house? No. There's a knowledge, not like a knowledge acquired out of a book. There's a knowledge that wherever you are, you have a house, yes? I'm when if I stay at work to 12 doesn't mean I've lost the house and and I don't have to chant while I'm work I have a house I have a house I have a house there's a knowing you have a freaking house yes just like when I went to that Turkish drug uh, drug that, that's where I wanted really to go the drug emporium but it was a rug emporium <laughs> now I probably would have bought what the drug emporium was selling but at the rug emporium I hadn't didn't have a house and I didn't have a floor f-l-o-o-r so no matter how beautiful the presentations of the rugs were no matter how long the presentation went on I was not going to buy a rug because I didn't have any place to put it, yeah? And it, they were great. They were the best salesmen that I've ever seen, but I was not gonna break down because I had a knowledge. I have nowhere to put the freaking thing. Mm -hmm. Then confronted with that, they told me they're gonna put it in my backpack. They're gonna fold it and I can put it in my backpack. And I, the next stop was Thailand. Oh, I, oh yeah, I'm gonna take an oriental rug to Thailand in a backpack, give me a freaking break. So I had an immunity no matter how much they pressed upon me, the need I had for a freaking rug, it, I wasn't buying any of it because I had a knowledge of my condition. Yes? Not the condition that my head's telling me, but the prior condition. I did not have a house. Yeah? The prior condition is being ourselves reality. That's the prior condition. Can you know that? Yes. Not like knowledge out of a book, but you can know it. And that knowing is going to be a great deterrent to false evidence appearing real. It is, yeah. And now instead of looking for relief, you'll be looking at the drive to look for relief from relief. You'll be relieved from the need to be liberated. You'll be relieved from the need of a lot of these fucking needs, yeah. You may not be able to write a blog. It may seem to get very boring and most people won't want any of it because there's not much of you in it, but it's fucking pretty assured that knowledge and you can rest there, truly rest there and truly have that peace that passeth understanding because the understanding of this is based on conditions that aren't true. Yeah, the understanding of this knowledge is a peace that passeth that under understanding. Yes. So you're resting, 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 and you didn't have anything to do with it. Therefore, you're not going to have anything to do with losing it. You didn't achieve it and then have that giant, oh, I fucked up big time. No, there isn't any coming or going. There isn't any, oh, at, there's at least 80 moments a, a day that it's apt. No, it's always available at all times, right where you are. And you start acting like that, yeah? Not with, not as trying to mimic an image, a mental image of it, but it just talk, it causes reactions and responses that you have absolutely nothing to do with. And you start observing effects and you know the tree by its fruits, yes? Yeah, you're traveling lighter. I mean, oh, Jesus.
See, there's shit and the flies are swarming around it. And then you try to say there's no shit, but the flies know better. They keep swarming around it. This is like this, the flies are gone. Yes. You don't need to do some kind of weird affirmation that doesn't work. You're just chilled. Yeah. And then whatever you want to do or don't do doesn't have all the meaning it was given because you're thinking what you're doing is bringing you somewhere. You're not going anywhere, really. Yes. You're basically not going anywhere. You might as well enjoy yourself here. That's the great news. It's like being uh, relieved of the need to be relieved. Yes. I can't put it any better. It's just a dropping uh, past the point of understanding of the mental logic. You're not, you're not, it's not your mathematics. You're not weighing things with that logic anymore. You're, you're getting these pulsations of a knowledge that doesn't come from acquiring. It's something that's inherently built in. You are what you're looking for. Yeah. And therefore the seeker and the sort is the seeker is the sort. It compresses time and space and that which you think you're on a journey to, it, you're greeted when you arrive by the statement on having never left, on having never left. No matter where you thought you've been or what you've done, it's been all erased in reality. Nothing's ever freaking actually happened here. Yeah. Did you remember your day when you're dreaming at night? Usually not. What do you think is going to happen when you, the, there's a passing away? This will be as if it never fucking happened. Yeah. What's going to be so is so now and forever will be so. Yeah. Being ourselves reality. We're seemingly appearing in this dreaming. Yeah. And we want it, we're looking at the dreaming as the dreamt when you can see the dreamt is part of the dreaming, yeah? You see the dreamt as part of the dreaming. You see what you call Paul as something foreign to you, yeah? And then you travel lighter as Paul. And Paul has been wishing to travel lighter his whole life and then he realizes it's because of Paul that you're not traveling lighter yes so when there's interest in Paul there's a lot of relief shows up and then sooner or later you put two and two together yes yeah huh. and the proof is in the pudding yeah the proof is in the pudding it's hard to sell someone peace if they're in peace. It's hard. Even if they use the word amazing or radical or extreme or something, you're probably not going to be that interested in it because you got the goods already. Yeah, you're at peace. Yeah. It may not be prefaced with amazing or anything like that. It may be just dog shit awareness, just ordinary awakeness, but it's fucking pretty damn reliable. Yeah, because right where you are, it's always available with absolutely no requirement necessary to be it. Yeah, I don't have to jump through any mental hoops to be where I already am. I don't. If you like jumping through hoops, great. But you, there's no requirements in this land of being. There's none, none at all. As long as you lose interest in the requirements you think you are had by, you're thinking you're having them, but you're had by them. To me, it's playing God. Unbelievable. The head is playing God with the idea of God. Did God tell you you'd have to do all this shit? Did it, did it tell you that things that you're before are blocking you off from the sunlight of the spirit? How could the sun be blocked off from the sun? Yeah. You'd have to be, if a cloud has the ability to block you off from the sun, you must not be on the sun side. You must be taking yourself to be somewhere else where the cloud has the ability to block you off from the sun. But if you are of the sun, you, you'll see the same clouds, but they will not have the ability to block you off from fucking anything. Yes? There's no need that has to be gone for this to occur. This occurs. First, primarily this occurs 
all the time. And then this comes after. To give precedence to that which comes after, to block what's before, to me is, is true, true illusion, completely, yeah? That there is something that can be, come between you and you. Where is that being made up? I lost my way. No, you didn't. Everything you thought you did or didn't do is still included. You can't escape from everywhere and you can't arrive at everywhere. You cannot arrive at where you already are. Where you're arriving to is something else. That's fine. I love it. But call it for what it is. It's not you. The you is already complete in and of itself. Yeah? So non-duality is a negation of what we're taking to be so because what's taking it to be so is reality. Yeah? The only thing that could fool reality is reality itself. Reality has got to be in on it for it to seem to be fooling it. When it loses interest in it, it stops fooling it. Yes, isn't it? One condition, false evidence appears real. It drives me into taking action. Consequences occur. I get tattooed by life. I may end up in jail for 20 years. Yes? Yeah. False evidence. The head is presenting false evidence constantly. Yeah? Does that change? No. The same presentation is, is false, but now the audience isn't buying it. Yeah? So now you're seemingly awake to being awake. You did not become awake. You are awake. You're now awake to that. Yeah? So false evidence is now seen as false evidence. And then in, amazingly so, it doesn't appear real without your consent. There's a transition where false evidence appears real and we play the main role there. We're seeing the false evidence and we can see it as if it's real and therefore it has consequences or we see it as if, as if it's false and it doesn't move the action figure to do anything. So you don't go to jail. You don't go follow the guy off the exit and get into a fight and get fucking go to you know prison for five years. It comes and goes like everything else does, yes? So now you have an ability to see false evidence. From what? From this? This is false evidence. If you're trying to make this recognize truth, this is false evidence. Taking it to be you is the biggest false evidence there is. How is this going to discern false and true? It's going to discern false and true like the... Course in Miracles says about the brain, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So the brain is going to interpret what's being presented to the body, which is called you false evidence. You know the salute, you know, you know the problem from the solution. When you get relief, you'll see the intricacies of what's going on here. Yeah to some level. Well, you'll see, like Ramana says, this guy says, all right, the presupposing of this non-existent thing wanting to get salvation for itself, right? It's presupposing of a non-existent thing being existing, and now it wants to get salvation for itself. And then it immediately goes, if that's the case, then the next statement is, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? Yeah. The spirit in this case, the spiritual practices that we are believing to take us out of something is reinforcing that we're in something. What? Who knew? Exactly. That's why non duality appeared because who knew? Yeah. So the information hopefully gets to what you are. So you'll see the ignorance of what you're not. It's look, it's using itself to look for itself as a way of being blind to the fact that it is that, yeah? Now, if these are shoes we just put out and if they fit, you wear them. And then maybe you'll go to and hear another thing about non-duality and maybe some understanding will trigger and you'll start, be, there'll be an admittance, man, exactly. That's what was going on. And then what happens? You're in a state of, I don't know. And then you find out about stuff, yeah? 
But this is what happened with me. I went and when a guy explained, he said, hey, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah. You can't use mind, big M mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light. Yeah. And I was wondering, why would he be talking to all of us about this? Yeah, if I'm Paul, but he was seeing us as mind, Buddha, light. And he was trying to get not through to Paul, but through Paul to the Buddha, to the mind and to the light. It was trying to talk to the Buddha and tell the Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Because seemingly Buddha, a.k.a. Paul, was doing just that. He was using the light of the Buddha to look for the Buddha. He was using big M mind to seek mind. He was using light to seek light. And then this man, this great master, Hoang Po, said, you can do this for eons and nothing's going to happen. Yeah, because you're the Buddha, light, mind, not as the appearance that the head has taken to be you, but as our nature. That's the assumption. That's the essence of the invitation of non-duality. You are what you're looking for. Yeah, And what needs to be questioned isn't the goal. It's the one who's trying to arrive at the goal. That's what needs to be questioned because you may be sitting right in the goal at this moment. Yeah, all the while looking for it because we're looking for it from what we're not. That's the basic assumption. If it's if the shoe fits, wear it. Things are op things will open up. Now, like this was a perfect uh, prescription for me when I heard it. I could feel it. I could feel like at a certain point, it was like an unspoken yes. And it was like knowledge before knowledge. And then I just, you know, hey, you got me, so to speak. Everything they said about using the Buddha. Yeah. Uh, self trying to get out of self. Yes. That's basically since I was six years old, I've been trying to change how I felt. Yeah. With everything, anything I met. So unfortunately, I finally realized because the idea that kept me doing it was I thought this thing that was driving me crazy was called self, but I thought I was Paul. But I found that Paul was a, an, another aspect of self. So my whole life of Paul trying to get out of self in, in the true x-ray was self trying to get out of self. And as we found out in recovery, self can't get out of self. Yeah. Why? Because you're not in self. <laughs> it's that freaking sin. What we're thinking we're starting from is erroneous. That's the assumption. Yeah. They want us to question not what we're doing, but who is the doer. Yeah. Not question what we're seeing, but who is the seer? What's seeing? What's hearing? What's feeling? What's tasting? What's touching? Yeah. Because the seeing is occurring the mental state claims the seeing and writes a story that you're the seer yeah seeing seer yeah and not only the seeing gets claimed when it's claimed the seer is, is historical you feel like you've been the seer all this time yeah so it's not seeing seer it's seeing seer seer historical seeing I'm the historical seer. I'm the only one that's seen all of these things coming from here. I'm the only one who's heard all these notes playing. Yeah. So thousands of notes have been heard, but there's only one here. Yeah. Thousands of thoughts have been noticed, but one thinker. This is the bondage of self. Yes. It uses thoughts. It uses sounds. It uses what you see and feel to imply that you're the feeler and the seer. And then you want to get out of what you're feeling as the feeler. And this is the bondage. You try to get out of, the, of what you're feeling as the feeler, which is the bigger feeling. And you get stuck and it becomes an addiction. And then you do almost anything. Like in my case, I was willing to pay any consequence tomorrow not to feel uncomfortable now. I felt incredibly fucking uncomfortable with this head. Yeah. We talked about it the other day. 
when I was young, for some reason, I like, you can see two main aspects of the head. Yeah. One of them is the thief and one of them is the policeman. Yeah. So when I was a young kid, the policeman was walking the beat. I was like a girl would say hello to me when I was 12. I'd go home and wonder what she meant by it for five hours. It was just constantly going over every fucking thing. It was unbearable. I wanted a drink. Finally, I was introduced to some when I was 12, 13, 12 or something. I finally got something that relieved me of the preponderance of Paul. Yeah. Yes. So this policeman. So then the thief aspect took over. I had a lot of fucking fun, but there was consequences because when I started to drink, I found I had magnetic appeal to people in uniform. I put out like a dog whistle and shit happened. But I was willing to pay any consequence, no matter how bad it was, to get this relief I was getting from the policeman. It was fucking unbelievable. To have to be perfect all the time was just fucking insane. So what happens, I try to be live as a thief for years, get my ass told, got run over twice by the same car. Tons of shit happened. Finally, I wash up on the shores of recovery and I get sober. So the, the active life of the thief is over. Yes. Okay. 1988. The thief has been put down. Hallelujah. Right. Long live the policeman. So the policeman head came back, brought the word perfect in. So I got to be perfect in sobriety. It was like a fucking big stick up my ass for about four or five years. It was unbearable. And I wasn't getting half the fun I had when I was a thief, you know? So how to get out of this policeman? Spirituality. That's what I went to. Started to do meditation. Oh, I saw just what, you know, I could tell you what color BVDs the policeman wore. But the, it's just, it was un, just more unbearability. Jesus Christ, taking myself so seriously. <laughs> That's the illness. Yeah, it can. you can take yourself seriously in robes or tattoos and leather jackets. As the, the head can use anything to take itself seriously. And then suddenly, and I went back to spirituality, tried it, and that failed me. And then I heard non-duality. And non-duality was, I was just dying for this message. Because they explain stuff to me and the shoe fit. Yes, completely. And I finally found the only way this urban renewal project was going to be canceled. I had to see it as not me. I saw it finally as not me. And there was a loss of interest in the thief and the policeman to a point where I'm chilled out now. Yes. The critiques I don't follow. They say it sends me reports of my condition. I don't read them. I'm uh, just ch chilled. I'm in a place of neutrality from, from the thief and the policeman. The thief was a pisser at times, but the consequences were unbearable. Yes. But this policeman was worse. I mean, this idea of having to be perfect, you're sitting in the zendo or something, and you make sure you're the last feet that you hear leave. I'm, best meditator you know the longest and this is fucking insane it's like you're on a race in a race all the time and it's still it's just complete unadulterated obsession with self just because it's done in a temple it isn't different it's the same shit yeah you'll know you'll know when you're on to something when there's relief to, from the need to know you're on to something yes People call me up and they go, how are you? I'm like stunned. I don't know fucking how I am. I don't check in every minute to see my condition. You're listening to a fucking a crazy weatherman up there anyway. Yeah. So this is really triggers a loss of interest. You, I probably, you probably never had it really. <laughs> I mean, the interest in us is fucking strong. To have it drop down to a certain level probably has never even occurred for most of us. But when you see it as not you, all that's implying it to be you, it it drops lower than it can ever go. Because if it, if self tries to act like it's losing interest in self, that's interest in self. Yeah, this will take you lower than you could go, and then you really know the problem from the solution. What you get relief from is from this addiction this ideation of you really
yeah <laughs> and and there's no parades yeah no it's not a big deal that's the beauty of it yeah i mean you don't have to polish it it shines on its own yeah you just observe what's happening and 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 what's producing the expression is it you and then there's an observing of the expressions and then this which it's only truly been really looking for it does not want to sit on a yoga mat for 13 hours it doesn't it wants a better cushion it doesn't want to do a lot of the shit it doesn't yeah it, it gets dragged by the mental state thinking it's i'm going to turn this into a chariot of the gods it does it wants to just to fucking chill you know <laughs> keeps getting dragged and dragged you cannot believe the panacea of loss of interest you can't you cannot believe what it's like to have it to have uh you not be t taken as you yeah literally that you not to be taken as you is an incredible level of relief and it stabilizes because it's based on a fact. You're not that. You're not the representation that the mental state draws about you every day. You never, it's not even close. Yeah, yeah. So now suddenly your basic condition is based on fact. It's not a manufacturing through other conditions changing to make an unchanging condition. You don't make an unchanging condition. You don't, you find an unchanging condition and it's always in the state of unchanging, yeah. And then the meaning to other changing conditions, you lose a lot of interest in that and you rest in the unchanging while the shit changes as it does, yes? Yeah. And I have this, the heaven for this is enough, yeah? If you can reach a nice level of enough, you have enough comfort. You don't need tons of comfort. You don't need this. You know, just enough is cool. The quality of life is good. You're getting old. Chill out. Yes. Yeah. You'll wear it well. Pretty good. So this is the point, and there's nothing new in non-duality. You can't, you can't fucking jazz it up. You can't synthesize it with anything else it's a purely unadulterated fact as the inherent basis of what's happening and what's not happening agree with it or not it doesn't matter because it's just going to keep on giving nothing is the greatest gift of all because it keeps on giving what nothing yeah and aren't you so tired of something really? haven't you had enough something Jesus Christ, doesn't it get old sooner or later? There's only seven continents you can go to. You're going to have to go to other planets to, seem, to make it seem new. Yeah? Yeah. So, any questions? Any questions, everyone there? I've been on mute this whole time. Sorry. No. Yeah, you Sorry. got it up here. Has it been all right? Yeah. Yeah. So, let me just give you a, a simple fundamental thing the mental state claims whatever it's brought into contact with so let's say uh there's a sense of being conscious yes so there's seeing hearing feeling tasting touching it's not demonstrating any thought effort to see hear or feel taste or touch does it no it's just that's its nature it becomes conscious of things it gets brought into contact with okay so conscious contact then in time that conscious contact has produced something, the mental state reacts and claims it. So when they're seeing, the mental state claims the seeing to imply a seer, yeah? When there's hearing, there is definitely hearing, but now it makes up from the definiteness of hearing a mythical hearer, yeah? Which is going to either slowly or quickly change the emphasis from the hearing to the hearer, yeah? So now you're more interested in the hearer of all the things that you're hearing. You're more interested in the seer, yes? So the seeing of a sunset 
after the seer has seen 20 of them may be boring to the seer even though the seeing of the sunset is just as beautiful as the first seeing of a sunset, yeah? But now, as a seer, you're bored. Fuck it. Oh, that's, oh, yeah, I've seen one like that. Yes? You know? It's sort of like that. So the seer, the seer starts neutering the living, yeah? So the seeing gets to be, oh, yeah, this, I've seen this before. I've heard this before. I have felt this before. I need to feel something new. I need to see. That's not coming from the seeing. That's coming from the seer, obviously, yes? The seer is lacking depth, so it tries to fill it up with more, so to speak, yeah? So more means something. Just what happens when you're in the world of retreats, and something doesn't seem to work out, let's say, in the first retreat, the obvious conclusion is to go to a longer retreat. That's what the head will usually present. I've got to go to a longer retreat, or I'm going to change the style. I'm going to go on a silent retreat this time, throw a little tantra in maybe, stuff like this. This one, vegan, I'm going to go there, whatever. Yeah. And so there's, yes, so you're trying to jazz something up. Not as the seeing, but the seer. The hearer, the feel, the taste of the seeker. So seeking doesn't work in some respects, especially if you're looking for what you are. So what the seeker does is just change his vehicles. So it seeks in different ways. So first you're a Buddhist, then you're a Zen, then you're a ceremony person, then ayahuasca, now that's gone. Now it's DMT5, and then something else will replace DMT5, maybe TMD7. And then there'll be, it's always a hierarchy and it goes on and on and on. This is all fun, fun and games, but you miss the whole point. To miss the point, you're enslaved to the seer seeing new things. Yeah. But like a child seeing, it can see that just like a dog, I, our dog, I can throw the ball once or 800 times. It's as happy as the first time as the 800th time. <laughs> yeah, it's not thinking it's a dog. <laughs> it's, oh, I've done this before. No, it's like it's just as excited as the first time I took it out. It's just goes berserk. <laughs> yeah. What happened? What happened with that childlike eye? What happened to it? Nothing. Something over what something was put over it, which is the story of the seer the hearer, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, yeah? Someone who, can you imagine how dr driven you can be to be as the feeler that you would have sex in a closet with a noose and end up hanging yourself by mistake? That wasn't the feeling, it was the feeler. Mm. The feeler had lost all feeling, so it had to go to extreme conditions to feel something again it wasn't the ability to feel it was the feeler that was fucking it all up yes this is the bondage of self the, the bondage of self is not feeling hearing taste it's the feeler the thinker you think thoughts are flipping you out it's the thinker that's flipping you out it uses the thoughts to do it just like the feeler uses feelings to support a story you feel like you're feeling a little weird, it tells you you're entering a lifelong depression. Or you're feeling great and it gets suspicious. Do I deserve this, whatever? Yes, you see it? It has a theme, you better recognize it because one theme is to elongate the, the, the contraction and then squish the expansion. And yet you're living a life of trying to expand as that which, that which is contraction, good luck. All your, ex all your expansions are going to be contracted and they have to have new ones because that's the bondage of duality. That's the bondage of self, yeah? The fear is now I can't live contractedly, so now you're addicted to expansive shit, yeah? The balloon can only blow up and, and get uh, you know, put down so many times. It loses its fucking elasticity, yeah? That bondage of self is going to, you're going to have a flaccid rubber band, so to speak. Yes? Yes. So, yeah, it's a simple message. If you don't like me, that's fine. But hear it again from someone else. There's a lot of nicer people probably sharing. Yeah. But 
this isn't about getting anything. Really, it isn't. It's about uh, the addictiveness of all that. Yeah. I mean, the true addiction in recovery world to me is the addiction of the head to this idea of being a self. Yeah. And, you know, a thought, let's say a thought held as yours could probably ruin your day. Yeah. It won't ruin my day unless I hold it as mine. Yeah. So it's not the thought, it's the my of it that gives it the power. That's our role. Yeah. And uh, if you really recognize the role that you play, you would probably want to surrender it to something wiser than what's directing it now. Seriously. You would like, as Ramana said, there's only two courses you can take. Either you get down to the root of your, the origins of misery by self-inquiry, or you surrender to something greater than yourself and thy will is done. Yeah. Some people are better suited to surrender where you admit you're just outmatched. Yeah. You're outmatched. Yes. You're trying to get out of you as you. It's not working. And then in that admittance, some relief is brought about and relief begets more relief. It does, yeah? Or you can spend time and ask, well, who is it that's uh, feeling like they're depressed? And maybe you'll see that you're not depressed, yeah? Yeah. But what makes a depression more than anything is the person who said thinks they have it. Yeah. And this idea of trauma, what's the real giver of meaning to trauma, but the one who thought they had the trauma? Where is that being looked at? Because now the thing, the next new thing is get to trauma. Trauma is the cause of alcoholism. Trauma, I do not believe, is the cause of alcoholism. I don't. I believe head is cause of alcoholism. Yeah. And I've been in tons of trauma and I was in an orthopedic ward with tons of trauma. Or, you know, with motorcycle accidents, and everything. And a lot of people with the same damage took it differently. Some people started to drink. Some people stopped to drink. Some people killed themselves. Some people do that. So there's always something before everything else. Yeah. What is that which is before? Yeah. It's us, like it or not. Yeah. So oh, that's it. Yes. Anyone, any questions here? Nice to see you, honey, again. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I'm very aware and I completely resonate with everything you're saying. Really, for me, ultimately, it's the relief of just feeling that peace at home. I recognize that I needed a home or I needed these things. And recognize that the home was within me and had activated relief upon relief and just effortless peace. And I guess my question is struggle is the, the toxicity topic or trauma, you know, that's formed in our life, whether it's abuse physically, emotionally, you know, that's where our struggle that kind of challenges mm. where it really gets a hold of me and you know and I start to identify these things I'm still struggling with whether it's relation friendship whatever it is like yeah physically in front of you it's physically happening what would be an example you know could you can I share something I, I yeah. recently had lost my father and it was so beautiful just like all the toxicity story with my mom brothers sisters i mean but i could feel it but i was just the observer but it was so effortless and I, I didn't engage in it i went to the services i felt that peace with my two kids next to me it was, it was honestly a beautiful experience I had come back from that the next day it was the first responder to fatality accident and I had to talk to people that were actually dying yeah having an out-of-body experience there was no emotions and no nothing connected other than pretending i was there for the experience but service yeah the next day i went i was the second responder to another fatality they were a fatality accident both duis both under drugs i recognize this out-of-body experience of sitting there and being present and just being the observer of it. there was no emotions there was no so 
detail. It's really that that piece. There's no trying. There's no stories. Yeah. Where I struggle is really abuse, toxic abuse thrown at you. I, I have attachments to it. I, I surrender to the attachments. I'm trying to, I guess, ask you the question and give you an example. I mean, you've got the door locked away. Do you, well, I think it, it yeah. Well, I think it's every situation, there'll be an improvisation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you can, some, you'll be directed at times by. Sometimes it's just not going to budge. Yeah, and then you need to use skillful means, so to speak, or you can always use the question, well, who is it that feels like they're overwhelmed or whatever? Yeah, because there's a lot of meaning being given to everything, yeah, by the head and everything. And it's nice to see that it may be getting ready to give you a hand of like twos and threes, yeah. And by diverting its sense of ownership and saying it's you and weakening it then the distribution gets shifted and you may have one of those sparkling i don't know pause moments yeah where uh you'll see your inability to deal with anything as a fucking uh a benefit yeah because you're in a state of recognizing something is doing for you what you can't do for yourself but i don't know what i don't have any road answers to it at all you do with what whatever is calling you and checking it out. And uh, sooner or later, everything has value because they're going to ultimately fail and you're going to be left with what you already are. Yeah. So, and if they can bring about relief far out. Yeah. But there is something, you know, what we are could be happening or not outshines circumstances and situations like an old master old uh adi da would say yes i always loved that statement that your inherent condition outshines other conditions it's a nice this is not something to hope for or something you may actually recognize that and have an assurance of that which allows you to walk in in without any dance step planned or whatever and just take the triggers or take the i don't triggers a bad word here <laughs> take the cues and just dance yeah yeah i had it a lot in a lot of levels when i first gave talks you know it was in aa and it was like uh dharma battles yeah there would be a lot of resistance and people coming to blows and shit like that and uh people would really like deflate my face. It was unbelievable. Like my egoic grape turned into a raisin in front of me and I wasn't saying anything. I felt so terrible because the, their attack was hitting. Thank God what I'm not. And I had no idea what to say or anything. And it would just take a course. And then after the meeting, all these people would come. I can't believe how beautiful that came out. I had no I fucking idea what I was going to say. And I had enough of these events that I saw something that if I'm not ready to jump into the uh, to the the thing, something's going to lead me there. And I much rather go the second way. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on in a lot of times. And then whatever's needed, I hope work comes through. Yeah. So if I had a problem and it seemed to be affecting something, I would probably do something. But. I what I really love is the ability not to do shit just for the doing sake of it. Yeah. Just chilled out. Yeah. But if I felt really fucked up about something, I would probably do something about it. Yeah. But sooner or later, everything's going to fail you. And that's their greatest success because you're it. You're, that's what you're looking for. Literally, you can't get away from, around it. So I do, you could do tons and stuff and it's usually going to lead you that I didn't have to do anything. That's usually the finish point. You can speed that up, really. You could get there earlier. But hey, it doesn't matter. What? Yeah, but I'm happy you had that lovely free sample because there's, there'll be more of that. Yes, and there'll be what, like in AA, we say you sincerely take a position, then you get established in a position. So... The new basis 
that's setting up, let's say the new basis of the knowledge of what you are by recognizing what you're not. Let's say that new basis, the new base, like a new floor, someone they just put in. And at first they don't want you to walk on the floor that much because it settles and then you can live as if it's a floor from then on, right? So as a new basis is getting, you know, laid down, yeah, there's times where you'll feel like, oh, you'll believe the false evidence seemingly and you'll get stuck up your ass of self and need a divine proctologist. Just have some cards with you. You can call me high or someone and call him. They'll pull you out of the ass of self and then, and you know, thank me high, but, uh, you know, and then enjoy being out of the ass of self. Help the clarity that non-dualism has been the ultimate piece for me. Yeah, great. I, I was the true definition of understanding alcoholism and substances and whatever, and it, it freed me from so many things. And I had a lot of guilt in many years, and I never looked back and think about it. Yeah. Uh, but my experience is, it was, it's not about the, to, for clarity, it's not about, oh, these things are happening at once, and oh, I went to this, I, it, that's my point. It was effortless, it was just doing, uh, I just, and I don't expect you to have an answer because it's our own journey, but it was just truly where my struggle is, is this full abuse in front of me. And that point. Yeah. Like physical, I mean, it could be actual altercation towards me it could be someone trying to damage me mentally or physically i know where where you're going with it but I, that's where my shift is and, and i'd be yeah open for any see i don't have any experience with that though tomorrow, yeah I, you know it might come from some gift but it, it's a real challenge for me to to witness but that's true, that part. It will probably show up. You may not recognize the delivery, but one you will sooner or later. Yes, it will. But I don't have a personal experience. I'm not in a EMT, like emergency. I'm not confronted with the physicality of it. Hey, I'm in, you know, yeah. Just, oh, no problem. That was great. I appreciate it. Oh, great, great, yeah. I'm happy you're here, everyone. Everyone, too. What's your name, my, my friend there? Uh, hmm? Who? Wes, nice to meet you, Wes. Yeah, you're lounging on the Chase Lounge. Not bad, yeah, satsang, Chase Lounge, nice, comfy. It's pretty good. Hey, can you hear us th uh, in here? Does anyone, Mike, does anyone have uh, any questions? We'll ask them here, eh? Don't ask any questions about any of the people here. I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> David, we can't hear you for some reason. Paul, there's a few questions for you. Um, Chris Gaskin, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first, Paul, I, I just have to say, but um, thanks. Thanks very much, man. You came along at exactly the right time for me you know um i've been weaving my way around this non-duality circuit and everything like that and the message that you're you're sending re really really hit home um and I, I don't really have any questions but just you know just a couple of observations really um you know like first up just the word understanding right to me you know, when you think of that word, right, you're kind of standing under this message, if you see what I mean, you know what I mean? You're yeah. kind of looking at it from above, it's above you and you're looking at it and everything is kind of coming down through it. So then it makes everything a, a, a lot clearer. Um, and then the other thing was that, so for for a lot of my life, I, I felt as though, um, I was kind of an imposter, if you, if you know what I mean, right? So I was kind of, like I, I i was like people were telling me things and i was like nah i'm not that no i'm I'm not as good as you think i am no i couldn't be you know um and then i tell people that that i i feel as though i'm an imposter and they're like no you're not an imposter you're really good but you know really and truly i think that that was right right because i was a yeah. fucking imposter you yeah. know what I mean? yeah, yeah. A person you know um I, 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 I you know it's kind of um 
it, it's kind of funny that that you know I, I was thinking I was an imposter, but trying not to be an imposter, and and that conflict in itself just showed me the the kind of erroneous nature of, of the thought process, if, if if you know what I mean. Yes. Um, and then the last thing, not not to to go too long. I mean, I, I was looking through like on Reddit. There's this our non-duality thing. And there was this question there today that was like, how has non-duality changed your life? And I I looked at that question like, I don't know that it's my life anymore, if you know what I mean. Right? How has it integrated? It's <laughs> fucking life. living, you know what I mean? It's not that my, that link, no, but it hasn't changed my life. I'm fucking <laughs> living, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. it, man. That, look, thank you, thank you so much for everything, man. You, you're, the, you're, the, you're the best. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you feel like you're a fraud and you don't want to feel like a fraud, you're gonna feel like one all the time. Yes. So why don't you get over it? Admit you're a fraud, and then it brings you to your not. Yeah. A lot of times where life wants to build to a crescendo, and we don't want to be there when that symbol hits which is you know i'm a taker i'm a this, uh, and yes and i meet i'm that and then because to be left with that's unbelievable but then the answer of non-duality is and you're not see that's beautiful so let everything see this is what happened with me in recovery i was avoiding a lot of shit successfully seemingly at a huge cost and i got into recovery and then all this shit landed and it was like, you're a fraud, you're a taker, you're this or that, you know, you're an asshole, you ripped this girl over. And, and so finally, I just, it all landed and I let it be as much of me as possible. And I saw it as not me. While I was trying to make it not me, it was more me than ever. Yeah. Finally, I let it land. Yeah. And it was the big reveal. Oh, no, I'm going to, this is going to kill me if I'm all this. And then I said, and I'm not. That's the beautiful, and what a, a lot of times, a lot of people are delaying that process because of the identification. They're so afraid to hear the truth, but the truth will set you free, as they say, because the truth isn't what you think it is. The truth is you're not that, yeah? All of that, whatever it is, and this is not a mental bypass or denial, you, it's a negation. You've recognized it. I'm not that. It brings an incredible relief, yeah? So therefore, fraud or no, it doesn't fucking matter. If I step on someone's toes, I'm not a toe stepper. I make amends and say, hey, I'll try not to do that again to you or anyone else, you know? And then it's just like, it's not like, <laughs> have you, if you have in recovery, have you ever done amends? So let's say you think you did, you ruined a person's life, you know, and you've been avoiding seeing them for 30 years. You, you go finally make the appointment and you meet them and they forgot the whole situation. <laughs> you know, you, you're so drenched in meaning. You think you, I can fuck a person's life. <laughs> they had forgotten the whole, what? What are you talking about? You've been dwelling on this for 30 years. They forgot about it completely. This is the joy. How people can forget you, you can forget you. How people forget you after you leave, like that, most of the time, completely. They don't have entrails of you for months and months. They're on to something else. That same thing, it's... Hmm? What if they didn't then you go to Mihai, get help. Hey, Paul. Get out, just, I'm just... <laughs> but they can never remember me as they remember themselves. It doesn't go any, not even close, yes? So this is like, you see yourself as Stanley while you were seeing yourself as being Paul. You lose interest as if you're someone else, yeah? Which is quite easy to do, yes? We do it all day, every day. That's the, the same effect, it's applied here. You lose interest in you because it's not you. And you know what? It's the fucking greatest, healthiest thing. Because a lot of times people are ill because they're trying not to be. The head is so powerful. If the head is 
leading your health vanguard, you're probably going to be sick. Yeah. It's too magnifying. Yeah. Just like if you've ever meet somebody who they look fine and then they hear they have something and they buy that name and they look like shit an hour later. Yeah. But they were looking just fine as long as they didn't know. There's too much giving name and form to shit. A lot of shit comes to go. A lot of shit reaches a level of potential, not actuality. It's when you jump in to try to avoid it, you give it life. The thing is mine. It's not problem. It's my problem. It's not life, my life. It's totally different. Like we used to do a thing early on with a, a board. And we put three words that are important to most people. Money, health, let's say sex, okay? Or relationships. All right, everyone looks at it and they give it a meaning, yeah? All right, I'm going to change the meaning of that word without changing a letter. All right, so I wish everyone here to have a lot of money, but I don't want any of you to have any of my money. So the my, if you put the my before the money, it's going to change the meaning of money to you. Yeah, if you put the my before a problem, it's going to change the meaning of the problem is. Yeah, my is 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 a distribution of meaning that goes unseen in most of us. The owning of shit allows us to be owned by that shit. Yeah, when you own something, it owns you. It's a double. It's a dualistic deal. I have it. It has you. Yes. So this is about recognizing we're not dealing with thoughts here. I could care less about thoughts. We're dealing with the idea of being the thinker. Yeah, because the thinker is a thought disguised. It's just another thought, but it says it's having all the other thoughts. Yeah, I don't care about feelings, the feeler. Yeah, because there isn't one. And the feeler puts a lot of feeling into the feelings. You see it with people. People now, they think they're going on a trip to Hawaii and they're excited that they think it's anxiety. We, we misname shit constantly. Constantly. People don't know what they're fucking feeling. Like, because there's an arbiter, there's an interpreter between us and the conscious contact. The thing happens and what is delivered is a story about it. And we're living from that story. And we're trying to change every other chapter but the author page. We want the author page to be us, but we want to change the way that the story's going. The thing that gives the biggest meaning to the story is the one who's having the story. We're the biggest story. Everyone wants to change this story, that story. See if you're the biggest story, the one who has all stories. You lose interest in that and you'll be able to live through the chapters of your life. You'll travel lighter through them. Yeah. You won't see it. This was never supposed to happen. No, you're open to anything happening. You don't. Jesus, you can't argue with the way things go. This should never happen. Who says? Everyone goes, why? Why not? Really? Why not? Why not something happens to you? What you're thinking you don't deserve is seemingly deserved by many right now in here, this town, probably. This is, this is not about changing anything. It's about seeing it. Yeah. I believe the seeing of it is more important than the it you're seeing because the meaning is not coming from what we're seeing. It's coming from the seer. It comes from here. Everything is empty, like they say in Buddhism. That means they don't, it doesn't have any inherent meaning. So it's open to be given meaning. And this is the dreaming. And we're dreaming. Yeah. And we're dreaming, as the Course in Miracles says, uncaused effects. We're dreaming as if the, the tiger is a, a real tiger. Even after we've woken up and realized it wasn't a real tiger. Yeah. We can, in a second or later, we can take it to be real again. And then the tiger has an uncaused effect. You're scared shit. But is there a real tiger causing that effect? No. It's you seeing it real is causing the effect. 
Is the trauma causing an effect or the one who's having the trauma giving the meaning to the trauma? I would say it's the second, not the first. I do not believe trauma's leaving tattoos on you. I believe you're the tattooist and part of the tattoo is trauma. Yeah, that's my view. I do not believe trauma is the source of alcoholism. I see ideation with self is the source of alcoholism. Yeah, yeah. I think you're go you're going to the after as the as the pre as the true influencer of the before. I don't think anything influences the before, unless the inf the, the before wants to be influenced by it. Like you and I are the dreaming of the dream. We're giving everything all the meaning it has. Yeah. Does that, does something have a meaning or is it given a meaning? And if it's given a meaning, who's giving it or where is it coming from? Is it coming from a person in Idaho? It seems like you're the witness. You're witnessing this transfer of meaning. We are giving everything all the meaning it has. Lesson two of the Course of Miracles. It's not saying, oh, that happened July 12, 1993. No, all the time. You and I are giving everything, which is pretty absolute, all, which is pretty absolute, the meaning it has. That, that's its hypothesis. Yeah. But we weren't doing this when we were young, right? It was happening, but we weren't interpreting it. We weren't the second stage of the interpretation. Yeah. Life was just happening. I don't know what was going on back then when you're a baby, because you don't have a sense of you doing anything, right? Yeah. You didn't even have the ability to recognize mother as an other for a while. Yeah. That's why we look at kids. I remember one day we had a meeting in, at Marin City. Some person came in with about $20,000 worth of clothing, beautiful. Then they, someone brought in a baby. All the attention went to the baby because <laughs> that baby had what we wanted, which is absence of self. Yeah, you know, just, just consciousness. Yeah, it's just forget the, oh, that's a nice, oh, oh baby. <laughs> that was attractive, isn't it? That childlike condition. Didn't you have, when my, I remember one of the day it left me in a sense, I was running around naked with this neighbor, a kid, uh, the Nichols kid, and we we're running and between the houses, our house and the other house was lawn, you know, grass. We were running around the house naked. And then my mother looked out the kitchen window and yelled at me. And then sort of introspection started then. Like, fuck, she goes, I want my mother's fucking, you know, <laughs> approval. And she seems to be fucking mad. Close. And then I realized, you know, I was just doing shit. And then suddenly when I walked into a room, it would be accompanied by thought. Yeah. And then almost everything from then on was accompanied by thought. Yeah. And the thought was about me. And when I looked in, I didn't find anyone. When I looked at Peter Kennedy, I thought that was Peter Kennedy. When I looked in, there was no one home. I had no idea what was going on. So my life in a weird way became a song and dance since I was a kid. I just fucking didn't have a clue. I couldn't wait to get some relief. And that was with alcohol and drugs. Yeah. Yeah. But, but Paul, oh. it, it, it doesn't leave, right? It's, it's always fucking there. You know, we, we, we put so much shit on top of it and we get educated out of it, if you see what I mean, right? We go to school and, and yeah, it's it all to. sorts of shit. And yeah, but but once you see it, it comes back. Like, like I'm sorry for... Yeah. Sorry. And it comes back based on, on having never left. So the whole idea that you lost it and went somewhere and went into the darkness and fought and everything... It looks good, but in fact, when you arrive seemingly back to where, what, you never left, it tells you you never left, yeah? Which just throws a fucking wrench in the mental logic. Hey, Paul? Can't, can't rock it, yeah, yeah. So sorry, uh, Mike M has had his hands up. Is that okay to unmute him? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I don't know, I'm not looking at the Zoom much. Sorry about that, yeah. Mike, can, can you unmute yourself, Mike? Or do I need to do it for you? 
I got it. Okay, Paul, great. thanks, first of all, for talking about trauma. I've been working in treatment for about eight years. And that's kind of a, it's an uphill battle with clinical that trauma is the sole reason for alcoholism. They don't know about the phenomenon of craving, the mental obsession. So I appreciate that because I opinion. went through, what's yeah. that? It's just an opinion. Of, of yeah, that. totally. Um, and I went through an inner child workshop, a trauma workshop. And like, I literally celebrated with a drink when I found out that my trauma was the root of the problem. And, um, and I, yeah. that's where I woke up to like, oh, wait, there's something more here. But the question I had for you, I was just thinking of a part of the um, St. Francis prayer, which says by self forgetting one finds, which just kind of hit me right now. But you said something before about prayer. It may not have been this talk. I feel like when I'm saying prayers now, after listening to this for a while, that I'm praying to a something outside of me. So it's hard to like differentiate this power being outside of me from it obviously emanating within me. Because some of these prayers is like I offer myself to you. Um, but remember, it's inside and out. It's not just inside. It's inside out. It's everywhere. So. Pray to everywhere. You can't miss it. Right. It just kind of feels, I don't know. Maybe it's just my yeah, own ego, but feel it feels like limited. That. You can get over that. Just like, just like, you know, there was a great master, Nisargadatta Maharaj, in uh in Love that guy. A famous book. Well, he was in India and stuff, and I mean his talks were whatever. And then, but when he'd walk in a room, he'd have pictures of saints and other things and he bow down and he wipe it and they were going why if there's no body to do and he says because i like to do it yes i like the i like this you know and same thing he used to smoke cigarettes how can you smoke a cigarette with the knowledge you have because i he said throw the body a bone you know i want the nicotine so you know what i mean so there's this uh, prayer can mean a whole lot of things. Maybe it's before it would be like, please some some super fixer come in and fix the situation that I'm in. Yeah, but it changes. And after a while, it's just the joy of expression. Yeah. Pray to, I love the feeling of a higher power of the re, in recovery. I love the feeling that something is doing for me what I can't do for myself. To me, it's one of the highest feelings an action figure can have is that it's directed, yeah? Because it's been feeling like it was the director by the other direction it was usually driven by, which is self, yeah? Self is a direction, it's not a director. So now with the higher power directing feels incredibly, ah, just, just jazzes me up, yeah? So remember, this is an artistic expression, man. Yeah? Yeah? So sometimes joy, you can't you just dance or you sing or whatever. You wouldn't want me to, but stuff like that. These things, does it have anything to do with it? No, but it's a great expression, you know? A reaction to being, ah, oh, this thing about the, uh, something could do for you that what you couldn't do for yourself in recovery i'm going to go off a little here in recovery there's a statement that no human power could you relieve you of this alcoholism it's an observation yeah you realize that nothing can get you sober and this was a case my mother had been praying for me to be sober she had the church or community praying sent me saint jude fucking necklaces and saint christopher everything like this the state wanted me to be sober i wanted to be sober i didn't want to drink but no human power could produce it and there i was sitting not that far from here in calistoga coming out of a two-day blackout like it felt like you know you know parachuting behind enemy lines i came to and i was with some guy in a trailer facing him drinking a bottle of Royal Gate vodka. And uh, at that moment, something did for me what I couldn't do for myself. I got struck sober. And I had no inclination or interest at that moment. I wasn't 
you know, praying. I wasn't, I had gotten to a hopeless state of mind and body seemingly. I had just been in a program for two years, gotten sober, went out, back out, got loaded again, and had been on a run for 10 months and washed up in Calistoga and I had had it. I'd, all I wanted to do was stay oblivious until I went to jail again or institution or died. Just fucking gave up. And something had another plan. Just whacked me, took out that urge. I didn't even know, I didn't feel the operation. My, the head just stopped, which I didn't think could happen. The screen got blank, which I didn't think could happen. And it was like a CNN news flash. And the news flash, just the headline, no story. And the news flash was, you're fucked. Yeah. And it broke through the denial. And it just landed like a ton of bricks, but they were the lightest bricks. They were like wings, really. Really, I had been, it was so much work trying to deny the condition I seemingly was in. It was a lot of fucking work. And then the next statement was, and I'm not managerial quality. And then my whole life changed from that point on. I haven't had a strong feeling or thought for 35 years about drinking and alcohol. And uh, that was one of the most demonstrative illustrations of a statement of something will do for you what you couldn't do for yourself. Yes. So that to me is like going to art school. I've painted gratitude and awe and honor on that over for 35 years. Now, is it true or not? I don't care. It's just joyous to feel the gratitude of something stepping in and saving your ass yeah and putting you to good use even the shit you thought had no merit actually that's been the most valuable stuff because it's allowed me to contact and and connect with other people in the same situation so what i called a valueless life has been put to great value through this program and this community that to me is an incredible demonstration and i'd like to give it a name of some power doing for us what we could not do for ourselves fucking great and i believe the action figure has a ceiling but some of the highest points it can reach is gratitude on a awe consideration empathy these are high qualities i feel yes and I could not produce them. I was brought to them through this transfer, this transforming aspect of the action figure, a sudden whack. And the thing is that whack probably would have died on the vine, but it led me through circumstances that night, bringing me to an AA meeting, the first one I ever went to. And if I hadn't met a design for living, that miracle probably would have died in a couple of days, probably by the weekend, really, yeah? but. It, gave, it not only gave me the gift, it gave me how the gift could uh, extend here, which was a way of life. I mean, what more do you want? Yeah. And then this, all this stuff came almost as a bonus. Once the alcoholism has been subdued, then the underlying condition really is the, the, uh, the identification as self. And you're not going to break that identification. You got to see it as foreign, really. That's all. It's the head's going to keep being identified as self. It's not going to change that much, really. Yeah, you might as well uh, try to, you know, land at that knowledge, not trying to gain knowledge through self. It's not going to work. Self has an agenda. It's not the one you think you have. It's And it's going to override what you call your agenda. It is. It's just, it It wants a life and you're the thing it's that's giving it. It wants to express and it needs you to be like transportation and it wants to take you over and the only way that could be broken to me is to see it as foreign because how can you be free from something yeah i had to see it as something other than me then the possibility of being free from it became available and it told me when that possibility showed up that I had been trying to be free as self since I've been six years old or so. Yeah. So it was all the kibosh was put on and then it was just growing into those shoes, but they fit. And then 35 years later, here I am. Fraudulent as the day I was born. 
Yeah. 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 Always emphasizing the message, not the messenger. Because the message is not going to help you, probably. The message will. In a way that you may not think is help. Yeah. It may leave you with your own devices and may be very uncomfortable, but the value of seeing your own devices as not yours is incredibly valuable. Yeah. If you keep handing something to that which is seeking to know, all you're going to know everything is from that which is seeking to know. This is a freedom from that which is seeking to know. Yeah. This is a freedom from that. You don't use it. It's not a tool. It's not used as a tool. It's not signed up for the trip. It's not a carry on. It's underneath the plane. It's. And it's worked. I mean, something happened with me. Now, I say these things from relief. Yeah. From relief, from the burden of having to get better, of constantly making something else as being the obstacle. You can cohabitate in obstacle-filled space. You can be peace while thoughts are happening. You can be at peace. It's the my, it's this interest that weds us to stuff that gives that stuff the power to seem to disguise something to us. It's only us. It's only us fooling us, really. And when you get tired of it and the interest moves, you're going to be that which you could never be free from, you'll lose interest in yeah, there's not going to be the final battle or the 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 vanquishing or the you just lo you lose interest in, in you know the pay per view final battle as Paul kills Paul. There's no viewers. <laughs> it's, I don't care. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that not giving a shit is beautiful, very beautiful. So we say stuff here, hopefully that. It will be like a shoe. If it doesn't fit, don't wear it. But if it fits, maybe look into what's been said. Yeah, because if you're doing the same thing, expecting different results, that's insanity. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyone Anyone else on the Zoom? Hey, Paul, it's David. Mike Mike had to go. Uh, I think that's it. We had one other hand up, but I think they had to leave. So did anyone else? Have a question? I think that's it. Well, Maybe let's say goodbye then. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Marty, thank you. Could you hear everything? The questions, guys in the Zoom? You could? You were faint. Yeah, you could hear them. Oh, great, great, great. And we have a lady from Scotland. We had some good accents on here. You should have felt something there. Yeah. We set this all up. It's beautiful choreography. Yeah, pretty good, eh? These are the, the the minor miracles that are so cool to see. All right, David B., thank you for everything. Pleasure, Paul. Thanks. Susan K., we're going to say goodbye and then we'll take off. And if anyone's interested in any books, I have some books in the car. We wrote three books. We did a book on recovery under arrest, and we have two other books. So that's if you're interested, we'll go get them. No more merch. No, I don't have uh, t shirts or anything. Zenbitchslap.com. Mm -hmm. Zen okay. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Chris H., Susan K., David B., Marty, Gene Tucker. Nice to see you, Gene, today. It went well today. You can hear everything. All right. Great. Beth in London. Did it, the message get to London? Yes. All right. Good. Oh, there's my friend Tariq. He's in Madova. Ah. Dover, New Jersey. Tom, New Mexico. Nice to see you. Chris G. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Shannon Corkery. Rich A. Rich A. Alan. Nice to see you. Oh, Colin from uh, Romania. Come here, Maria. Come here. Oh, yeah. Here's uh, I got I got some of your uh, citizenry. Here, hold on. Which one? Uh, he's right here. Hello. Hello. Buna, <laughs> draga. Ah, buna. Hey, Claudia, where are you? Where are you? I'm Bucure. 
București. Voi v-ați mutat acolo sau nu da, 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 de mult an. Romanian. Mai, mai vorbim atunci, da? Cum te cheamă? Călin. 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 Ah, we surprised you, Colleen. Yeah. Yeah. Then Miss Lapp always knows. Oh. Emerson, nice to see you. Oh, there she is. Oh, yeah, you got the cat. You got the girl. Yeah. We got Mike M. Nice to see you, Mike, down there. Chris G. Oh, he's back to the small door. That's good. Andre. Irene, thank you, Irene. Thanks for uh, filling up the presence here. Yes. We got Hari. Hari. Hey, Paul. We're closer to you than ever, Hari. We're in uh, Northern California. I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sally Underwood, nice to see you. Peter S. Shantz. Miss Amelia, she's right here, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got Zoe from Arkansas, Mia from Down Under. Hmm. We got to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, I think I got everybody. If I didn't, uh, we apologize. Thank you so much for the day. We'll be back home. We Thanks, have a talk Paul. on Tuesday and everything, just like usual. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Thanks, Paul.